This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Well, welcome back, Known Podcast. So excited uh, for another episode today. You know, and I've really enjoyed, you know, making this podcast. I've, I've enjoyed, you know, the process of it. And But I'm also interested in some feedback. I'd love to hear some of the things that you're learning. I'd love to hear some of the things that you're growing in, as well as I'd love to hear uh, some of the things that you want to learn. You know, what are some of the topics that you want us to go through? What are some of the, maybe some guests that you want us to bring on? What are some of the things that you want to learn? What are the things that you want to grow? And so let us know. And you can do this just by sending us a DM, send me an Instagram message or send me a Facebook message. And I'd love to just hear um, what it is that we can create great content. Because again, our goal is to create content that allows you to grow closer to Jesus, that it will help you unleash the power of your creativity, and that will also help you develop as a leader. And, and, and I think it's so important. So just let us know how we can serve, uh, how what it is that you want to learn, and we're going to do our best to create content that will help us all grow you know, as people. And I, I've heard people say this, and I'm sure you have as well, is we need to have an attitude of gratitude, right? You've heard this before. I've heard this all the time. Have an attitude of gratitude. And this is a great thing to say. First of all, it rhymes, right? It it has a rhythm to it. It sounds good, but it's also true, right? Having an attitude of gratitude in our life is so important. It's so important for us to do this. But what happens when you don't want to be grateful? What happens when your attitude towards gratitude is bad? Right? What happens when we look around our our situation, we look at our life, and we do not see a lot of things to be grateful for? Right? What do we do? When I was a kid, my sister, when we were young, she was a toddler, she wasn't always happy. And I know this might shock you, it might shock you that my sister wasn't always happy, but sometimes she would be unhappy and she'd throw tantrums. Sometimes she wouldn't share. Sometimes she was mean to me. And I, I remember I was shocked as well. Four or five-year-old kid, my younger sibling, how could you be so immature? How could you be so mean to me? You're so young. And, and, and it shocked me. But it was so funny that whenever she was having a bad attitude, she would always say, I'm having a bad attitude, right? She would combine the words bad attitude, I have a bad attitude. And I think sometimes in life, when it comes to gratitude, rather than having an attitude of gratitude, we have a bad attitude. Of gratitude. Our response, our attitude towards gratitude is bad, right? We, we, we don't feel like, I don't want to be grateful. I don't have a lot to be grateful for right now. Do you know what I'm going through? Do you see my situation? Do you see my pain? I don't have a lot to be grateful for today. And oftentimes our attitude towards gratitude is bad. And I think it won't surprise us, and we know this, that gratitude is necessary for human connection. It's necessary for creativity and to develop ourselves, to grow ourselves as leaders. We need to learn to be grateful, and we know this. We know how important it is. We know how beneficial it is. We know the beauty of gratitude. But I think we all also know it's hard. It's hard to be grateful. It's not easy to be grateful in every circumstance, right? It's not easy to praise God when things aren't going well. It's not easy to be grateful all the time. It's not easy. We know it's important, but it's still not easy. And I want to go through a few things that a bad attitude of gratitude will do in our lives. Some of the things that having a bad attitude towards gratitude will do in our lives and these are just a few of them but these are so so this is what number one is this is that when we have a bad attitude of gratitude we become green with envy right what happens is we see what other people have and it creates a life it creates a pattern of envy they have a year newer car you know, they have the, the, the newer iPhone, right? Maybe you have an iPhone 10 and they have the iPhone 13 or maybe you have a Samsung like, wow, I really wish I had an iPhone because they're better. They're the best phone ever made. We become so envious of what other people have. And so what happens is, 
is that when envy becomes a big part of our life, everything we do is to build ourselves. We look at other people and we can't even have close relationship with them because we want what they have so badly it gets in the way of relationship. This is what a bad attitude of gratitude does in our life. You know, this is what envy is. Envy tells you that you will always need the new thing, right? That the most, you need the most improved thing. You need the newest, best thing. What you have is old now. What you have isn't good enough now. And what we do is we'll do whatever it takes to get the new thing. We'll do whatever it takes. We'll pay whatever it costs to get it, even if that's your career, even if that's your relationships, even if that's your money, even if that's your time. Envy will destroy you. That's what happens when we have a bad attitude of gratitude. And number two is that we that greed takes over. You know, greed is common, right? It's common. I think we all in some capacity struggle with greed in our lives, but we don't talk about it on a personal level. You know, I, I don't know many people who, who ask for a prayer for greed. I've never, you know, met someone who's like, hey, I need you to pray for me because the problem of greed in my life, it's taking over my life, right? We, we don't talk about greed. We don't realize oftentimes the effect that it has. We don't even realize the hold it has on us. We don't realize how greedy we actually are. You know, a bad attitude of gratitude is created by becoming hoarders of what we have rather than sharers of what we have. Greed says, I can't give because I don't have enough. Greed says, greed says I'm going to continue to build myself, build my wallet to collect as much as I can. We become hoarders of what we have rather than sharers of what we have. And this is what greed will do in our lives. Our mission is to collect and attain everything that we can to build up ourselves. And we can't be generous because in our minds we don't have enough. So we have to get more. We're in this constant quest to get more. And what will happen, this quest to get more will leave you isolated and lonely because our mission in life was to get whatever we can at the expense of people, at the expense of relationships, at the expense of cost. We don't care. We're going to gather as much as we can to make ourselves better. So we stop thinking about other people. Greed tells you that you will never be enough and that what you have will never be enough. Greed will destroy you and it will destroy the greatest of relationships. Number three, when we have a bad attitude of gratitude is that circumstance will cloud our mind. The, thing, the things happening around us, as we all know, really affect us. Right? The things that, that happen, the circumstances that, that happen to us, the things we can't control, really affect our attitude towards gratitude. Because what happens is our focus, rather than becoming being on what do I have, our focus is, okay, this is what I need to overcome this, or this is what I, I need, wish I had. This is the things that, that I wish I could have had in my, in my lives because our foundation becomes so weak because we've based it on things that change. We've based it on our education or our career or our relationships, things that can change, the things that, that, that are so temporal in our lives. We base our, our entire identity on things that change, and when they change, we think, I have no hope anymore. You know, greed, this is what it can do. Gratitude shifts our mind from the battle to our provider. You know, a, a, an attitude of gratitude shifts our mind from, 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 from what we focus on. It shifts it to the, from the storm to our God. It shifts it from what we don't have to what we do have. Yes, circumstances will come that are challenging. And when, and when they come, we have to really check ourselves and say, hey, I'm still going to be grateful for what I have, even though some of it might disappear, even though I might be losing something, I'm still going to be grateful for what I have. Circumstance clouds our minds, and so gratitude becomes something that we wish we were doing, but we're not. And then number four is that people become our competition, right? Right? People become our competition. People become our biggest adversary. People become our rival because in our society we've been taught, we, we think that in order for us to be successful, someone else has to fail. In order for me to get the promotion, it means someone else won't, right? In order for me to get the job, it means someone else is going to have to get fired or laid off. You know, we, 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 people have become our competition 
This is what happens when, when our attitude towards gratitude is so poor, it's bad. We have a bad attitude of gratitude. What happens is people become our competition because we think that they need to fail in order for us to succeed. They become our adversaries. They become our rivals. They become our enemies. And if we're not careful, it will destroy you. People are not your competition. People are not your competition. They are not your adversary. They're not your rival. They are your friend. They're your teammates. They're your co-laborers. They are, they are the people that will fight for you, that will be there for you when your circumstance is hard. Don't push them away because you feel, you feel that you can't have a relationship with somebody who maybe got the promotion and you didn't. Stop comparing yourself to people and start celebrating the people that God has entrusted into your life. Start doing some of these things in your life. And these are just some of the things that a bad attitude of gratitude can do. And there's so much more, but these are you know, some of them. And, but there's so many benefits of gratitude in our life. There's so many benefits of being grateful. The things that can shift, the things that can change, the, the beauty of it. And the next question that I want to ask us is, what does an attitude of gratitude do? What does it do? What does it mean when we actually are grateful? When our lives are filled with thanksgiving and rejoicing and celebrating? What happens in our lives. And there's some shifts that are going to take place and that really can take place. So I'm going to give us five things that gratitude does. And I'm also going to give us five practical ways that we can grow gratitude in that area. And how we can grow gratitude in ourselves, how we can grow gratitude in those around us, those in our families. And so we're going to go through these five things. Here we go. Number one is gratitude produces joy. Gratefulness and joy intermingle. You know, great gratitude produces joy, and joy produces gratitude, right? It goes th- both ways there. You know, gratefulness and joy coexist. And some of the most joyful people I've ever met are the people who might have the least. Some of the most joyful people that I've ever met are some of the people that have the least. You know, I've done a lot of missions work in my life and I go some of these remote places and you know they have a lot less than I have they have a lot less food and stuff and space in their house they might not even have a vehicle but they're some of the most joyful people that I've ever met why because they have become grateful they have their needs met they have what they need to survive they have it you know people who are thankful when when someone does something for them who are grateful for for it all, grateful for everything. We can produce joy in people by being people of gratitude. Gratitude produces joy. If we want to become more joyful in our life, which statistically a lot of us are not that joyful, if we want to become more joyful, learn to be more grateful. Great Gratitude produces joy. And Beth and I have tried to shift the language in our home when it comes to this. You know, we still always apologize to each other. You know, when, when she would do a task that I was supposed to do, that I said I would do, that she asked me to do, or the vice versa, right? If I asked her to do something she didn't do, and then I did it, she'd say, I'm sorry that, that I didn't do that. And that was actually causing some problems because we were constantly apologizing, but we were never saying thank you. And so we tried to shift our language. We're doing this still, where if Beth does a task, that, that, that I was supposed to do or that I said I would do. Rather than me saying, hey, sorry that you had to do that task, I say, thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing the dishes, even though I was supposed to. Not, I'm sorry that you had to do them. I should have done them. I'm horrible. Look at me. Thank you for doing the dishes. It produces joy when we're grateful. We produce his joy. It says, I pr- appreciate you for doing that. Thank you for making, making the time to have coffee with me today. Rather than saying, sorry that you had to leave work early to come have coffee with me. Say, thank you for making time to be with you. This language shift produces joy and it produces love in other people. We need to be people who pr- are producers of joy. And one of the best ways to do this is to be grateful. You know, and so practically, I want to give you a practical application that you can do to actually build joy in other people, to grow gratitude that will produce joy. And this is it. Encourage somebody today. 
Express how thankful you are for them and what they do. You know, what this does is that you'll see a demeanor shift in people. Why? Because they, you're saying, I notice you. I notice what you did. I notice the, the things that you're doing at work, maybe after hours. I notice I'm not so grateful for what you are doing. Encourage somebody today. Rather than apologize that you didn't meet their commitments, rather than even say, hey, I'm sorry, I might say thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for your patience. I know this was supposed to start then, but thank you for being patient with me. If we want to learn how to produce more joy, to produce more gratitude in our life, we need to learn to be encouragers. We need to learn how to express gratitude and thankfulness when people do something. And we, because all it does is just to say, I notice you and I'm so grateful for you. So that's number one is gratitude produces to joy. Number two is gratitude develops generosity. You know, generosity combats a bad attitude of gratitude, right? It really combats it because rather than constantly thinking about how I can make myself better, how I can grow myself, I'm constantly thinking about how I can help you grow. Rather than trying to grow my collection, trying to build my wallet, trying to build my bank account, I am so focused on how can I make you better? How can I bless somebody else? How can I be generous towards you? And Beth and I have a young daughter. You know, she's just over two years old and she's amazing. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's caring. She's loving. She's the best. I love her to death. Like she's amazing. One of the most incredible human beings I've ever met on this planet. However, like any other human being, she is not perfect. She is not. And I can tell you story after story of her imperfection, like all of us. She's a human being, just like all of us. And she's become a hoarder of her toys a hoarder of her toys, especially when there's other children in the house, okay? She's become a hoarder of her toys. She will literally, if there's other kids around, she'll literally be walking around her house with all of her stuffed toys in her arms. Like, probably weighs more than her, right? She's carrying them all in her arms. And any time another child comes to around her to maybe take one or just to be close. She starts crying and, and tries to run away and toys are falling out of her arms. She's trying to grab them. She's crying. She's screaming because she doesn't want to share. She Sharing is hard for her. But sharing is not just hard for kids. Sharing is hard for everyone. It's hard. Generosity and sharing are the same thing. You might say, I'm really good at sharing. I'm, I'm really generous, but are you willing to share what you have? Generosity is not, is a lifestyle not a moment. Generosity is something that we live out daily, not just something that we do. It's who we are. Become a generous person out of a desire for, uh, to love people, not out of an expectation. We should desire to be sharers, desire to love people well. We should be desiring to give what we've been blessed with, to give our money, to give our time, to give our expertise. This is what generosity produces is gratitude because gratitude develops generosity, right? It develops generosity in our life because we're saying, I'm grateful for what I have. I have so much. I've been blessed with so much. And out of my abundance, out of what I have, I'm going to give. I'm going to give what I have. Generosity is important and, and, and sharing is, is, is hard. Sharing can be so hard because we, we always think, I don't have enough. What if I go without? Because if we're giving, we're going without. If you buy somebody, you know, Starbucks, you know, pay it forward, that means you're going out, going without maybe $20, $30, right? That's the price of a coffee these days, $20, $30. Bucks. That's what generosity does. It shifts our mind because it says, hey, I'm grateful. And out of my gra gratitude, out of it, I'm going to develop generosity, not just in me, but create cycles and patterns where other people can be generous because they have because I gave. And practically, how do we grow when it comes to generosity? Give something this week anonymously. You know, there's a big difference between being generous when everyone's watching and being generous when no one will even notice. There's a big difference. Don't just give because people are watching. The most generous acts are those done in private where we get no recognition. Some of us, we only give, we're only generous when other people are watching so we can look better. 
Some of us were only generous when, when, when someone else notices. You know, if we give a gift, we have to tell them, hey, I gave you that. That's for me. You know, that's for me. I gave you that. Look at me. The most generous acts we can have are anonymous. They might not even know that it was you who did it. No one else might even know that you're the one who gave. Those are the most beautiful acts of generosity. If you want to learn to be more generous, if you want to learn to have an attitude of gratitude, be generous anonymously when no one else will even notice. Bless somebody and don't tell them it was you. That's what we can do this week to grow ourselves. Find someone in your community or at work that has a need and meet that need without telling anybody. You know, it might be cooking some meals for them. It might be, you know, writing a check or giving them some cash. You know, it might be, you know, shoveling the driveway. It might be uh, cleaning their car, whatever it looks like. Be generous anonymously. Shovel someone's sidewalk without telling them it was you. That's where we can tell where our heart is with generosity. If we're only generous when other people notice, our heart is just to, to be for people to see us. Generous generosity in private is really where we see where our mind and our hearts are when it comes to generosity. So that's number two is that g- gratitude develops generosity. Number three is gratitude creates hope. It creates hope. It brings us back to a place where our hope isn't in what we want. It's in what we already have. We stop spending all of our time and energy wishing we had what we don't have and using our time to develop what we already have. We become hopeful in what we already have, right? That's what happens when, when we're grateful because we say, I, I, I'm content. I have what I need. I, I have everything that I need. And Jesus is the hope of the world. You are not. <laughs> You're not. Your job is not the hope of the world. Your career your education, your car, your house is not your where we, our hope comes from. Jesus is the hope of the world. Realize our hope doesn't come from our government. It doesn't come from our pastors. It doesn't come from our parents. It doesn't come from our siblings. It doesn't come from our bosses. It doesn't come from our job. It doesn't come from our education. It doesn't come from that. Why? Because those things are temporary. Those things are subject to change in a moment. They're fragile. They're temporal. Our hope is Jesus. He doesn't shift like the shadows. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Shift our hope. And when we're grateful for what Jesus has done in our life, our hope becomes, it doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter the fear. It doesn't matter what I go through. Why? Because I trust Jesus. He is the hope of the world. Learn to be grateful. And hope will become a bigger part of your life, a bigger part of your story. Hope is what our world needs, and we're carriers of that hope. You know, practically, how do we grow hope, and how do we let gratitude create hope in our lives? And I want to encourage you, spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in meditation. Take time to put your hope in the right things. Take time to be grateful that Jesus is on your team. To be grateful that Jesus is, is in control, that Jesus is your protector, that he is your provider. Spend time contemplating and thinking and reflecting on Jesus and the, the hope that he carries and the hope that he brings and the love and the joy that he brings. If we realize that, if we spend time with Jesus, he will become our hope. That even though, yes, things get hard, that even though we look around, our circumstance is horrible, we can still be grateful. We can still be grateful because we trust him. He's in control. He's taking care of you. He's providing. He will do it. You know, the Bible is filled with encouragement and warnings when it comes to gratitude. You know, one simple Google search will bring them all up, right? One simple search will bring them all up. And I want to encourage you, spend some time in prayer and meditation this week. It might be 10 minutes in the morning before you head to work. It might be during your lunch break. It might be just before you go to bed. It might be after dinner as a family, creating space to make Jesus the center of everything that you do. Number four is this is that gratitude generates contentment. We suck at being content. 
We suck at thinking that what we have is enough. We suck at looking at our situation, at our house, at our car, at what we have and say, this is enough for me. I'm content. You know, I don't need a new TV. I don't need the PlayStation 5. I don't need the iPhone 13. I don't, I don't need it. You know, that's something that, yeah, it'd be nice to have, of course, but I, I'm good. Like, I'm chilling. Like, I, I don't need it. We suck at being content. Because we're always trying to gain. We're always trying to keep up with everyone else. We're always trying to make sure that we look right, that we, we look successful, that we look powerful, that we look like we have it all together. And we think that stuff and things are going to make us feel that way. And it's not. It's not. We need to learn to be content. And gratitude generates contentment in our life. We all need to learn to be more content. Our society is so focused on what we can get. The things we can own and the cars that we want to buy and the bigger house that we think we need. You know, my pastor, Dave Myers, he says it this way. We need to stop buying things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like, right? We need to stop doing these things, buying things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Gratitude allows us to realize that we already have enough. We can become content in the house we have. We can become content with what we have. You know, it's so interesting because we think we need a bigger house. We're like, man, I, I don't, all my furniture doesn't fit in my house. All the things I, I have don't fit in my house anymore. And so our garage gets so full, we need a bigger garage. So rather than throw something away, rather than give stuff away, we said, no, I need to get a bigger house so I can store my stuff. We need to learn to be content with what we have because gratitude will do that because we say, I, I already have it. I have a car that drives. I have it. You know, I'm good. I, I'm doing well. And how do we practically realize how content we actually are? How do we actually grow gratitude when it comes to our contentment? I want to encourage you. This might seem absolutely insane. But practically, over the next week, make a list of 100 things you're thankful for. 100 things. You're like, ah, that, I might not even have four. Well, I'm telling you, when you start to actually think, when you start to actually reflect on gratitude, you know what's going to happen? You're going to realize, wow, I have a lot more to be grateful for than I realize. I have a lot more to be thankful for than I realize. And I do this on my phone and my, my notes app. I write down, okay, this is what I'm grateful for, a hundred things. Can you do that? A hundred things to be grateful for it might seem like a lot. It might be, it might be seem overwhelming, but I guarantee you, you will find 100 things to be grateful for. It might be food on the table. It might be a warm house to live in. It might be a car that starts in the morning. It might be your family. It might be your friends. It might be your education. What is it in your life that you're grateful for? Write down 100 things that you're grateful for. It's a challenge, but it will help you realize, wow, I have so much. I'm so blessed with what I have. You will find 100 things to be grateful for. And then the last one is this. Gratitude understands perspective. Gratitude understands perspective. What you have right now is what you were praying and hoping for just a few years ago. You know, maybe you were praying for the job and you finally found the job, the one of your dreams, the one that was going to be successful, but then a few years later, it's not enough anymore. You didn't get the raise that you thought you would. Yeah. Your coworkers are don't pull their weight around the office anymore. You know, I need I need a better job. I need I need better pay. I I need this and so so what we were praying for Two years ago, that was a blessing then, has now become a curse. The things that we were praying for, the miracle we were looking for, the job we were hoping for, the spouse we were praying for, we got it. And then a few years later, it's no longer enough. My spouse that I was crying out to God for, no longer meeting my needs. No longer meeting my expectations. So it's time to find someone new. You know, the house that I bought by God's grace is now too small to hold all my stuff, all my furniture, all my TVs. I can't park in my garage anymore because I have too much stuff. I need to buy a new house. I need to get a bigger garage. I need to have more bedrooms. I need to have more. That we, real, that we forget that the house that you're in was already a blessing. 
what you already have is, is this blessing. And that's what gratitude does. It helps us realize and understand perspective. Your perspective matters when it comes to gratitude. Your perspective matters. Do you realize what you have? And that what you have is a dream of somebody else. The car you have is somebody else's dream. The house you have is, is somebody else's dream who's, who's, who's renting a small space with a lot of children. The, your house is their dream. Your job is what they've been praying for. Your family is what they've been desperately desiring. Realize their perspective. And that's what gratitude will do. It helps us understand, wow, I'm so blessed. Wow, like what, what I was praying for, the miracle I got, wow, it's still providing for me that job. It's providing this house that I get to live in and be cozy in. It's a blessing. And realize that's what gratitude will do to help us understand the perspective of it all. And, you know, practically, how do we do this? I want to encourage you, think about the blessings you have now that you needed or wanted five years ago, two years ago. What are the things that you have now that two years ago were just a dream? The things that, that, that you had two years ago that are just a dream. And for me, this is our car. You know, Beth and I, we used to have this old Suzuki Swift, right? Small car, but it worked. It got us to, from point A, point B. You know, it was cheap on gas. It was small, but it did exactly what we needed it to do. It was our only car for a while. But eventually, it started to, to die. It started to fall apart. It started to have some problems. One of those problems was that our headlights and our, our, our headlights and our high beams stopped working. And so if we were driving at night, I kid you not, we were driving one time in the country, country road down this big hill and all we have is our flashers, right? So boop, 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 boop. And so we're driving in the middle of, of nowhere with our flashers going. We cannot see a thing, but we can only see like every second, right? So boop, boop. And so we're driving and we can barely see and we're like, we're kind of nervous and people are flashing us like, hey, your lights aren't on. We're like, I know, right? Like, I, I know that my lights are not. I realize that, that I can't see. Like, I'm not dumb. Like, I know. And it was falling apart and we were dreaming of a better car. We were dreaming of a car that would start in the morning. Dreaming of a car that the lights worked. We were dreaming of a car that the heat worked. We were dreaming of a car that we could trust to actually get us to where we needed to go. And so we got this new car and we were so blessed by it. It was a miracle and God provided and it was amazing. This car that we got. But how many times for me... Do I look at my car and say, man, I wish I had a truck. I wish I had a truck that could tow a trailer. I wish I had a truck that could tow a boat. Now we got to go buy a boat, right? How many times I wish my car had the DVD player or the backup camera or, or self-parking? You know, how many times do I wish that I had something else? This car was a blessing. It was a miracle a few years ago. And I need to change my perspective and realize that yesterday's blessing cannot become today's curse. Yesterday's blessing cannot become today's curse. God blessed you with something. And we'll be, when we realize we're grateful for that, it can change everything in your life. I need to stop complaining about the blessings I have and start enjoying them. Enjoy what you have. Enjoy your house. Enjoy your car. Enjoy the things God has blessed you with. Enjoy them. Stop complaining about them. Stop complaining about them. And, you know, gratitude has this ability to put things into perspective. Because it, it, ingratitude has the ability to throw away a miracle because it isn't enough anymore. To throw away a blessing because not anymore. I need, I, this isn't enough anymore. It's too small. It, it's old. I need the new. I need to look cool. I need to make sure everyone knows that, that I know I have it together. I need to wear the right stuff. Like, be grateful for what you have. Allow gratitude to realign your perspective, to realize what you have is enough, that you already have more than you need, that you are enough. Gratitude is attractive, right? It's attractive. We love being around grateful people because they aren't complainers. They don't complain because they're content. There's nothing harder for some of us than being around constant complainers. 
People who are constantly, this sucks. This is the worst. I don't have enough. You suck. Every like their their attitude is so poor. That this bad attitude of gratitude. It's so hard to be around people like that. Why? Because it brings us down. The greatest leaders are people who are grateful. You know, grateful leaders make the best leaders. Grateful parents make the best parents. Grateful spouses make the best spouses. Grateful pastors make the best pastors. Grateful CEOs make the best CEOs. Grateful kids make the, make the best kids. Gratitude changes everything. And we need to shift from having a attitude of gratitude to an attitude of gratitude. We say, ah, yes, things might be hard, but I'm okay. I'm content. I'm joyful. I'm happy. I know that God is my provider. It might seem hard, but God is taking care of you and he's taking care of me. Let us shift from a attitude of gratitude to an attitude of gratitude. It has the power to change your life, and not just your life, but the lives of the people around you. It has the power to ground you with a firm foundation that will be a hard rock and, and uh, that'll be right on, the, uh, on this rock, this firm foundation. That'll be hard to shift. The storms may come, but you're gonna be okay because yeah, I'm grateful. I'm joyful. I'm content. I'm not greedy. I'm not envious. People aren't my competition. I take care of people. I love people. My perspective is better. I'm content. I am filled with hope. I'm generous. I'm joyful. That's what gratitude can do in your life. Let's have an attitude of gratitude as we go forward. Let us be content with what we have. Gratitude is powerful. You know, I believe that you can do this, and I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for The Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast, and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.